Hi, I'm Tobin with TroutSupport.com. You're about to watch a free training clip on understanding tides and currents for coastal bay anglers. Stay tuned after the clip and we'll have a sneak preview for you from our DVD, Find the Fish, Catch a Limit. It's from our Speckled Trout Intensive Training DVD series and it shows how guides and tournament pros catch more speckled trout more often. Enjoy the tide clip. Welcome to Tide and Current for Bay Anglers by TroutSupport.com. What we refer to as tide is water moving in and out of jetties and passes into bay systems. Tide is caused by the sun and the moon's gravitational force interacting with large bodies of water like the Atlantic Ocean or the Gulf of Mexico. As the moon's gravitational force interacts with the water, it causes a bulging effect on the surface of the water in the ocean or gulf. The sun's gravitational force also causes this effect, but it's much less than the moon's. When the sun and the moon are in alignment, you get a combined effect that will cause a higher tide. Okay, here's our Earth, and enter stage right the moon and creates the bulge of water on the Earth's surface, and the bulge of water follows the moon as it rotates around the Earth. As this bulge of water nears a pass or inlet, the higher water is forced into the bay, causing a flood tide, and as that bulge of water leaves the area, the water recedes back to normal, causing an ebb tide. Tide current occurs when there's a difference in elevation between the water outside the bay and the water elevation inside the bay. Now let's look at how to read tide charts. A tide chart is a line graph showing the elevation of this water bulge at a fixed point, say like a jetty or a buoy out in the bay. For example, at a fixed location, tide current will occur between a high and a low on the graph or vice versa. Here's an example of a strong outgoing ebb tide on December 10th starting at midnight, followed by a strong flood tide December 10th starting at 6 a.m. The tide current speed will be based on the difference in elevation between the high and the low in the time that it takes to get there. Or here's an example of a weak tide between December 11th and 12th. You see there's not much change in elevation over a long period of time. There are a lot of great tide resources out there. Here's a free one provided by NOAA and shows that tide and current charts aren't only linear graphs. Here's a tabular format which also shows the slack water time, the maximum current time, and then also the speed of the current that happens at that time. And whether or not the tide is a flood tide given by the positive speed in knots or an ebb tide given by the negative speed in knots. Now let's look at some atmospheric interaction that causes effects on the current speed. A dense air mass such as this high pressure system can reverse a high tide causing an ebb tide to occur or just strictly reduce the low tide to wintertime lows such as when a cold front blows through a bay system and causes extremely low tides. Now let's look at the wind's effect on tides. Wind causes wave-driven current. With a brief look at wave physics, there's a rotational energy inside of a wave, twice the amplitude of the wave. This means that the entire surface of the water is actually moving and creates a current across the surface of the water. As this current on the surface of the water interacts with the rest of the water column, a current in the bay system can be formed during windier days. Here's an example of a wind that is exiting the bay system, thus causing a wind-driven current to force water out of the bays. Sometimes this is evidenced in the bays on the Gulf Coast with a southwest wind, sometimes combining its effect with a high pressure system during the summer. Similarly, an offshore wind will cause a wind-driven current to exit the bays. You have a combined effect pulling water out of the bay, causing extremely low tides. And certainly this atmospheric interaction can reverse what would normally be a high tide and force that water out of the bay, causing an ebb tide or an outgoing tide. Now the reverse of that is a strong onshore wind. An onshore wind can draw a forcing current to push water into the bays, causing a false high tide or flood tide. Now how can you use this information to better fish the bays? One of the things you'll want to do with an incoming tide is you'll want to fish where the bubble is forcing in and always stay slightly ahead of the bubble to always be catching some of that forcing tide. Here's a short clip from our DVD, Find the Fish, Catch a Limit, where Steve Hillman talks about exactly doing that very thing to always be catching tide in the bay. Started out closer to the channel this morning and when the incoming tide started dying down we moved further away from the channel so we could still catch some of that incoming tide. On a weak 
tide, you can always move to a constricted area. The constriction will cause an increase in velocity in that current, so you'll at least have some current to fish in. For example, this reef that stretches almost entirely across the bay right under the surface, both ends of the reef and the cut in the middle would be good on very weak tide days to find current. Something else you can do on weak tide days is go find a marsh drain in the bay and fish the outgoing current that feeds into the bay for speckled trout. And if the current is really weak, you can go back into the marsh drain and fish for flounder while you wait for a current to develop somewhere else in the bay and fish for trout again. Now let's talk about something called false current. False current can be caused by barges on the intercoastal waterway. These barges draw so much water that as they move, they push millions of gallons of water ahead of them. This water is forced out through the open cuts along the old spoils of intercoastal waterways and causes a false current. In extreme weak tide conditions, these spots may be the only place you have any tide current at all, and any current is better than no current. One note of caution, only fish this method around the intercoastal waterway where there's barge traffic. Ocean going liners can throw a huge bow wake and can cause a bow wave three or four feet high crashing over reefs. That is not a good place to fish and is highly dangerous. Check out our DVD, Find the Fish, Catch a Limit. It'll help you look for the keys to find feeding speckled trout in areas where you know there's gonna be current. And here's why everyone is getting excited about our DVD from TroutSupport.com. <laughs> Are you ready to enter the minds of speckled trout tournament pros and fishing guides and see what they look for on the water? Welcome to TroutSupport.com and Precision Fishing Resources. We'll be showing you the strategies of tournament pros and guides showing you how to catch more speckled trout more often with our unique computer-aided models and demonstrations. Let you see into the mind's eye of a pro and let you know what they're thinking so you can catch more trout. Here's a quick demo. If we were to slice into a section of that reef, these graphics show what guides and tournament pros are looking for to find and catch more speckled trout more often, including animation graphics of how speckled trout feed under different tide and wind conditions, and 3D graphics that help you understand what's going on underneath the water and what you could be seeing on the surface of the water to key you in on the fish. Proprietary real-time simulations show you what to do under different conditions, including this real-time yep. teaching scenario. Detail screen highlights make sure you're seeing what guides and tournament pros are seeing. This will leave you with a mental picture of what to do on the water to find the fish. These teaching scenarios include on-screen visual communication that will coincide with the content being talked about. When you're drifting open water slicks, you might... We'll also discuss the keys and what you need to be looking for to make sure you're in the fish and talk about what lures to use when and why. Just like that. And we have a detailed interview with Captain Steve to talk about what we did that day that weekend anglers could do to find and catch more speckled trout more often. And we'll look at how to adapt these methods, whether you use a boat, kayak, wade, fish the jetties, or the surf. At TroutSupport.com, we're committed to passing on the secrets of the pros and tournament guides to you. What would be possible if you knew without a shadow of a doubt that you were using pro strategies on your next fishing trip? Now that you've seen why everyone's getting so excited about TroutSupport.com's DVDs, don't take our word for it. Go to the website and check out the testimonials, like this one from Barry. Barry says that it really helped him out on the water to see things that he hadn't been seeing before. And Bill writes, thanks for the DVD. It helped me find and catch a six pound trout last Sunday while fishing with my son. Go to the website, check out the testimonials and get the DVD. We've got a money back guarantee on it because we know it delivers. Thanks and have fun and catch more fish.